Hello everyone and welcome to our online service here at Wellington Square. Um, I have tried recording this greeting a few times and I've got rainy weather and wind and thunder and sirens and so they have all kind of stopped for the moment so we'll see how this goes but wherever you are whatever the weather is right now um, the location you are at we are just so glad that you decided to join us this morning for our online service and we would love for you to feel engaged and connected as you are watching this morning and so whether it's just sitting and closing your eyes and listening to the words of the worship music or standing up and singing out loudly um, also feel free to chat and just connect in the comments and share with each other how God is speaking to you throughout the service today also if you are able to partner with us and support the ministry through giving you can do that with credit card or e-transfer and you can send that to our email address which is accounting at wsquare.ca once again we are just thankful that you are sharing your time with us today and we're so glad that you are here we're going to start our service out with worshiping our god who is so worthy of all our praises. Praises rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Yeah. 
walking around these walls I thought by now they fall but you have never failed me yet waiting for change to come knowing the battles won for you have never failed me yet your promise still stands great is your faithfulness
want to share with you a piece of scripture. John chapter 15, verse 4. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine. You can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I could just sit, I could just sit and wait for all your goodness, hope to feel your presence. And I could just stay, I could just stay right where I am and hope to feel you, hope to feel something again. I could hold on, and I could hold on to who I am and never let you change me from the inside. And I could be safe, oh, I could be safe here in your arms and never leave home, never let these walls down. But you have called me I will be 
I could just sit, I could just sit and wait. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're well. I hope you're staying cool in this really hot weather that we've been having. And I hope you're staying well hydrated. So over the next few weeks, while we put uh, the story on the back burner for a bit, we are going to be diving into John 15. And this morning, I want us to start in verses 1 through 8. So John is in the New Testament. That's in the second part of your Bible, if you're not sure where to find it. And it's the fourth book in. Sometimes we call Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John the Gospel. So this morning, we're looking in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. And I want to read to you what chapter or what verse 4 says says, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So another definition for remain is to stay, to dwell, to rest, to abide. And that's a word that I want you to remember for the next few weeks, abide. So this morning, I brought along a little something to help us understand what Jesus was talking about in that chapter. So this is my mint plant and I've been trying to take really good care of it in my house. Um, if you look carefully, there's two branches coming out of it. There's this one here and then there's this one here. And so I just, how do they look to you? Like I'm really not the best gardener. So it is, I really needed another opinion. To me, this one looks a little bit I don't know, limp and withered up. Like it looks like it needs something. And this one seems to be much healthier. It's way more green, but I don't know. This one just looks tired and almost dead. But I mean, they're both in the same pot. They both live in the same space in my house. I water them the same. But I don't know, maybe if I dig a little bit deeper and just kind of see, I don't know, this, this one feels really secure. Like I can't pull this one out. This one, oh, this one wasn't really attached where it needed to be. The healthier one was, and it, it seems to be attached way down deep. And this one, not so much. This branch isn't connected to the vine at all. It hasn't had the proper nutrients from the vine or the roots to go through it, to nourish it, to keep it green, to keep it vibrant looking, to give it life, to help it to grow. Jesus said that he was like a vine and we are like the branches and we must abide in him. But when we're apart from him, we can do nothing. He wanted us to see how important it is for us to be connected to him. Just like this poor little mint branch here. You know, I think all of us would rather be this healthier version of the mint plant. It's getting water, it's, it's attached, it's getting nutrients from the soil, it hasn't broken away. If this was a, a grapevine, it would produce delicious grapes. Jesus wants you and me to produce fruit in our life. And I don't mean like peaches and grapes and those kinds of fruits. I'm talking about things like kindness and gentleness and generosity and love. Can we be all of these things and show all of these things to others all of the time on our own? No. Just as the branches, we must be connected to the vine before they can produce the fruit. You and I have to stay connected to Jesus to produce the good fruit that God expects of us, the ones of love, the one of kindness, the ones of grace, all of those things. And when we stay connected to Jesus, if we abide in him, we will grow. 
seems pretty simple, doesn't it? Our life will produce leaves and delicious fruits and goodness and kindness, but if we're separated from Jesus, we're gonna die, we're gonna wither up, we're not going to grow. We aren't going to produce those good fruits to share. So how do we stay connected to the vine? How do we abide in Jesus? How do we stay growing in him and firmly planted? And how do we keep nourished and healthier and growing in him each and every day? Well, we can dive into God's word and read the Bible. We can pray to God. We can tell others about Jesus. We can listen to other people's story about Jesus and how he works in their life. And in doing all of those things, we are going to remain rooted. We are going to remain attached to the vine. Let's take a minute and pray together. God, we ask that you help us to be faithful followers of Jesus to be people who remain connected to him so that we can produce fruit in our lives. God, when we start to wither up and go through dry spells, remind us to dig deeper and stay connected to our living vine. Help us to be people who share about the good news of Jesus in our daily living. Amen. Have a great week. May you abide in Jesus. Here I lay my burdens down Lose my worries in your love Casting every care on you I have carried them enough We're not alone Here within his love Emmanuel He is still with when the world becomes too much Near the cross I will remain Until every fear is still At the mention of your name We're not alone Here within his love Emmanuel He is still with us We're not Mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, mercy is falling, falling. Lift 
lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, I know your past is broken. You can move on. Welcome once again to my backyard. Uh, behind me you'll see a vine. And uh, that's going to be the object of uh, this lesson this week. Um, Jesus speaks about himself being the true vine. We're in a new series. Um, it's really about how do we thrive in the midst of challenges? What's the one thing that Jesus would have us do in order that our joy might be complete, full, absolutely perfect. And so I want to kind of wrestle with this in the next three weeks, focusing on John 15 verses 1 to 8, and just unpack that for us all, so that in these trying times, we can have the joy that Jesus has promised. So the story is going to be moved off till uh, after Labor Day, and we'll have a mini-series right now for three weeks. Then Michael Knowles will be preaching in August, and he'll be looking at um, the Lord's Prayer. He's the preaching professor at Mac. Div. So uh, let's pray. Father, on this day, we thank you. You are good and your love endures forever. Uh, we thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you that by faith we can be grafted into him, the true vine, and that you have made a way where our lives can bear much fruit, where we can know power through prayer, and where our joy can be complete. I pray that you would in a wonderful way. Unpack this word, your word, to us this morning and in the weeks to come so that our joy in you might be complete. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you wouldn't mind opening up your Bibles, if you have one there. Um, if not, you can read along in, uh, on the screen. So we're looking at John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. Now, this is a very important text. This is the bullseye of the bullseye of Jesus' teaching. This is the last teaching that he gives before he um, is walking towards Gethsemane and on, onto the cross. And so John is highlighting this as probably one of the most important teachings that Jesus gives. 
And his topic is discipleship. And, and how do we become effective disciples of Jesus? And so listen with me now, John 15. Jesus says this, he says, I am the true vine, my father is the gardener. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it ready to bear even more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for um, whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, becoming my disciples. And so that's Jesus teaching to his disciples. And, and the key is abiding. Um, there, there's that one thing that we can do that if we do it well, it, he promises that our joy would be complete. Um, and so that word abide is mentioned eight times in seven verses. Some translations take that word abide and uh, define it as dwell, uh, those who dwell in me or uh, remain in me. And so he unpacks these incredible promises that that those who dwell, abide, or remain in him, that they will be fruitful. It's, don't we want to be fruitful? That the kinds of things that Jesus did, you know, the ways in which he impacted lives, you know, brought healing, words that brought hope, and when he entered into a situation, it was always made better. Um, that's the kind of fruit that he's talking about, that we would be uh, instruments of God's grace in the place in which we find ourselves that we would have power when we come into the throne room of god when we pray uh, we would have power that things would happen uh, he's, he promises that just abide um, that that the father would be glorified that when he sees us it'd be like a dad who's just full of joy because of um, the good things done in through his daughters and his sons and then finally, that we would have complete, full joy. That there would be, our lives would be known as, uh, as lives filled with joy. And so he says it's this one verb, abide. Now, the big question is, how? How do we abide? And so if you were to ask me, you know, pastor, you've been uh, pastoring for 25 years. And, and if someone asked you, uh, when, when you've looked at uh, all of the scriptures and you've studied it for your lifetime, what is it that you would say to them uh, is, is the key to abiding in Jesus? And I would say, listen, if you can follow this acronym um, called savers, you know, something that savers, you, you savor a coffee, you, you savor a good meal, you savor a good relationship. I'm going to unpack six, those six letters and if you can make that part of your morning ritual, um, I, I would contend that you will probably wonderfully remain in Jesus and him in you. And so what are those um, six practices that can happen in your morning that can help you to abide with Jesus the rest of the day? You see, I think we need to prime with Jesus. You, you know how you prime a pump, you get some water that we, we had a pump in our camp in Thunder Bay and before it could uh, pull in any water, you needed to put some water in the top and there was always a cup of it. And, and then all of a sudden, once it hit prime, it was good the rest of the day. And to abide with Jesus, somehow we have to get prime and, and typically that happens first thing in the day. And so we need to savor. Those who savor Jesus will find prime. So how do you savor him? I contend that the first thing that we need to do when we get into the presence of Jesus to abide well with him is to be silent. 
the scripture would say, be still and know that I am God. But there's something just being in the very presence of Jesus, just inviting Jesus and asking everything else to be still and just inviting him to the table. <laughs> My son, uh, when he was four years old, uh, in the middle of the night or whenever I was praying, uh, he would get out of his bed often and he would come and he would just come to the couch where I was at and he wouldn't say a word. He would just kind of climb up to my lap and just just nestle in there for a minute, two, ten, twenty. And I felt like when, when everything was okay with him, when we spoke no words, but when he was filled up, he was able to go back to sleep and find rest. That's the first part is just allowing Jesus to fill us up in silence. Sometimes our mind has a hard time being silent. And so one of the practices that I do, I just call on the name of the Lord. Uh, I call out Emmanuel. Some people call it Maranatha. Some people say Jesus. Some people can speak in tongues. And so as they do, they feel the big thing is just inviting the very presence of Jesus in to that time through a time of silence. And, and you'll know he'll come because he's the Prince of Peace. And it's as, if, it's as if, as we get to that silent, still point, uh, we have peace. He is priming the pump. The second thing is affirm. We need to affirm who it is we are in Christ and, and who it is that Christ is and who God is in the very nature those very fundamental truths we need to kind of grasp. Jesus would say, when you, when you gather in my presence, remember me in the breaking of the bread and the pouring of the cup. That he's saying there's something that we need to remember. If we're going to attach to Jesus, we need to remember that his body was broken for us. That in fact, we come attached as beloved of him. But, but more than that, we become, we're, we're forgiven of him. And that, that we uh, are, are always his. There's an everlasting covenant. And so we can affirm that in his presence. Yes, I am beloved of you, Lord. I am forgiven of you. You are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of my worship. You are the personification of good. And you can remember, remember all that you can remember about the goodness of Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you can begin to affirm it. That's kind of worship, you see. You're, you're, you're worshiping your... And there's something that happens when you speak truth. The truth sets you free. Free from what? From, from lies and also free from anxiety and worry. But you need truth more than to be an intellectual thing. It, you can begin to visualize who you are in Christ. A great athlete would do that as they think about um, the race before them. They would visualize winning. And, and you can visualize what would a son, a beloved son of a daughter, how would they engage at work? How would they engage in a conversation? And you can begin to play out the, the, the agenda of the day in your mind uh, from the vantage point of who you are in Christ and who Christ is and the help that he has. And as you visualize that, he empowers you then later on to live it out. And so you've done that. Now it's a time to offer, to, to bring your offering to Jesus, offering of thanksgiving to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, to, to find three or four things that you're grateful for and just lay it at his feet with thanksgiving. Thank you for this day. Thank you for health. Thank you for uh, wisdom, for your promise. And you can lay it out at his feet. You can also bring what's called a peace offering. You can look at your soul and, and recognize, is there some place that you need peace? And you can confess those places where you've missed the mark. <laughs> And you can find that in that confession, he restores your peace. You can look around you and you can see the people that need peace. Those brothers and sisters in Christ who are straying from the Lord, who are sinning. You can pray that the Prince of Peace would minister to them. In fact, the scripture says that when we pray for one another, if we see a brother or sister sinning, that God will give them life. And so we're establishing his kingdom of peace both in us and around in the body. And then we can wrestle into the world and, and think about the places that need peace and begin to pray. Remember, we have that power in prayer that God would bring peace. That's our peace offering and we bring a thanksgiving offering. And then we can begin to look at the day. 
Uh, what does it mean, Lord, for me to offer myself as a living sacrifice? Are, are there particular uh, assignments in the day? And listen, and as things come to mind, you can go back to the visualizing. Uh, what's that look like to be faithful in those assignments? And the Lord will begin to allow you to know what that is. And you can ask in your prayer time that you would be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God in that place. So after you're finished your offering, now it's time to read, you know, to read his book, the word of God, the holy scriptures, God inspired over time and, and meditated by the church and affirmed by the church from generation to generation. And all scripture is, is breathed out from the very um, nature of God into, uh, into words. And, and as we begin to meditate on, the Holy Spirit begins to bring it to life in us and corrects us and rebukes us and challenges us and reforms us again and again and again in order that we can be fruitful, do good works, sign to us. And so as we reflect on on. Uh, his word, we begin to have clarity about who Christ is, who we are, and, and the work and how that work is to be done in and through us. And finally, uh, we can scribe. We can begin to write down those things in which our time with the Lord has taught us. What, what have we learned? Where are we praying? So we can watch for it later on and see that the Lord is indeed faithful to answer his prayer. And we can go back and thank him for that answer. You see, if you want to attach to Jesus, it's a verb. It's, it, there's an action on our part. And it's to savor him. And, and so we need to be silent in order that his presence can come and we make room for him. And then we affirm who he is and who we are in Christ. We, we hold on to truth. We visualize what that truth looks like. We allow our imaginations to be caught up into his very throne room. And we allow those very truths to be downloaded into our heart and into the reality in which we're living. And we allow for him to begin to show us how we can live it out. We more than that, we, we then bring our offerings, thanksgiving, um, our offering of peace, both in us around us in the body and in the world and the offering of ourselves. And then we read a chunk of scripture. And as we read it, we begin to listen. Oh Lord, what is the one thing you want to teach me through the scripture? And you take that one thought and you begin to meditate on it. Why Lord, have you bringing that to me? And is there an error to avoid a promise to claim a, a truth that I need to hold on to? How does that get lived out in me? And we ask for the grace in which that can happen. And then we write it all down. And you see, that's, that's when we, we, we are being primed and we're, we're ready for the day. And it happens first thing in the morning. You see, if you'll do that, you will be attached to the Lord the rest of the day. You, you, you've, you've hit prime, you're ready to go. You see, it is hard. Uh, it'll be a hard, it's a hard thing to do. When I talk to people about their morning rituals and their quiet times, I often get silence because the whole world will crowd in and it takes a discipline to abide a discipline to remain, a discipline to dwell. And, and I give you this discipline because I, it, it works for me. And, and I pray that you'll tweak it, you'll make it your own, you'll try it out. Because the stakes are so high that if we want the Lord to do great things in us, great fruit, <laughs> great praying that brings great results, a father who is absolutely glorified through us, his sons and daughters adopted through Christ Jesus. If our joy is going to be complete, Jesus says it needs to be about abiding. And that if we're not abiding all the work that we do, that, that we think is good, he says it's going to be burned. It won't amount to much. Only that which comes through our abiding in Christ, his life in us, animated in us and through us, will come to uh, bear good fruit. And so the Father is pruning us and cleansing us. He's the gardener so that we can bear great fruit. So what's the one thing that you can do in this COVID-19 time, this summertime that, that can bring you uh, great joy? Well, Jesus would say it's abiding in him. And so I've given you a plan and I pray that you would meditate on it. I will send it out. Uh, I've sent it out in the Friday uh, offering and I'll send it out again on Monday. 
And would you consider savoring Jesus? Uh, and watch as you do your life, uh, his ministry in you and through you, reach a new level. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you that you want to do great work in each one of us. And yet, the only stumbling point uh, isn't you, <laughs> it's us. I pray that you would work into us a spirit of abiding, a spirit of remaining, a spirit of dwelling in Christ. That we would so attach to him that we would not want to be one moment without him in our day. Help us, Father, to abide in him. Teach us what that looks like, how that is lived out. Make us a people at Wellington Square that absolutely would be a people who abide in Christ. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Just one. 
as you go from this place and into your world this week. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he grant you all that you need so that you might abide with him. In the good and in the challenging days of this week ahead, may his love prevail in you and through you and his kingdom advance wonderfully around you. I ask this in Jesus' mighty and powerful name. Amen. Thank you.